going on guys? We will YouTube here back with another video. Welcome to the very first episode of a new series entitled Rules of the Game. Uh, today we are going to be talking about the open game state and chain ability. Okay, so as everyone knows, as of 25th of April, a good three months ago, um, ignition priority was removed from the TCG. Um, this does not mean that priority in a technical sense is gone altogether, it just means that on the summoning of a monster, which it, in and of itself does not start a chain, you are still able to declare priority to activate um, and resolve an effect before the opponent can respond. So all that stuff like Rescue Rabbit, Insector Dragonfly, Insector Centipede, Lone Fire Blossom, BLS, Red Eye Starting Smile Dragon and other stuff like that, anything with an ignition effect now has to wait for the opponent to respond. As we all know, this stuff is basic. So as an addendum to that, basically the reason why uh, Effect Failure didn't work against the likes of Lone Fire Blossom and Rescue Rabbit specifically was because both of those cards are off the field and they banish slash tribute themselves as their own costs to activate and resolve their effects. And um, so they're no longer on the field when Effect Failure resolves and that was why. It wasn't some kind of magical thing like they outspeed them or anything. They don't actually outspeed them, they just get to activate their effect first and the chain link dissipates. Okay, so who can list off for me right now what actually starts a chain? Most people would go with stupid things like say, oh, somebody a monster starts a chain. No, it doesn't. Uh, basically, the only thing that starts a chain is the activation of a card. The activation of a spell card, a trap card, um, an effect when a monster is summoned, that starts a chain, and also monster effects themselves. They all start chains. So basically, if my opponent normally summons Rescue Rabbit and I send Effect Bayer to the graveyard and target Rescue Rabbit, Rescue Rabbit himself does not start a chain. Um, I am responding because Effect Bayer can be sent from my hand to the graveyard at any point because she has a quick effect. Um, effect Bayer herself starts a chain, but uh, not in response to the rabbit. Uh, next point is that the player who is not the turn player can respond at the end of each phase that the turn player has. So at the end of a draw phase, standby phase, main phase one, etc., uh, the player who is not the turn player has the ability to activate a card. Um, technically, the opponent, uh, the turn player is supposed to ask the opponent at the end of each phase if they want to activate a card, although that's a bit silly and it's a bit impractical and takes up too much time. But uh, that is a fact that some people actually don't know. They'll just sort of skip right from their main phase to their battle phase or whatever and forget about it. So we've been talking about how priority has left the game in a certain sense, but it has also stayed the same in another sense. Uh, that is specifically in relation to what is called the open game state. That is, at the beginning of each phase, after all chainable events have resolved in a previous phase, uh, the game state is essentially open. And what this means is that the turn player, in fact, does have what is can be termed priority to activate effects before the opponent can respond. Because certain cards cannot be activated at the beginning of a phase, but only at the end of a phase. Okay, so hypothetically, my opponent summons Rescue Rabbit, I respond with Effect Failure. Um, that rabbit is essentially screwed. Your opponent sets a bunch of back row and ends his turn, that's fine. Um, the next turn, because he hasn't normal summoned a Rescue Rabbit, at the beginning of main phase 1, the turn player is in an open game state. There is no chainable events currently being resolved, and so the player, technically speaking, has, I suppose, what you could call a priority to activate and resolve the rabbit's effect before any kind of response. The only difference being with quick effects. For example, the opponent couldn't drop Effect Failure, no but he could drop max C, because max C it can be dropped in anticipation of such an event in any phase. So he could drop it in a stand at the end of the standby phase, for example, before the main phase begins. But you couldn't drop effect failure at that point, because effect failure can only be dropped during the main phase. And at the beginning of that main phase, there is an open game state. So you cannot start a chainable event. The only the turn player can, basically. So the point to note is that at the beginning of each phase of a turn, not just the main phase, but every phase, there is what is called an open game state, when no chain links or anything like that are currently being resolved. Basically that means that if somebody does something like drops an effect failure at the beginning of your main phase, you will set, you simply say to them, in response to what? It's an open game state, there's nothing, there's no chain links, there's nothing being resolved, nothing is going on, you can't just drop failure out of nothing. Well, I'm sure you've all pretty much got it at this stage, but basically the brass tacks of the matter is that um, everything has to be a response to everything else. At the beginning of each phase, the turn player always has, I suppose in a technical sense, priority to activate and resolve effects that are already passively face up on the field, like Rescue Rabbit, who's been veiled once already, and say a Lone Fire Blossom these days, who's also been veiled. 
Um, secondly, once a chain has begun, it resolves in the typical fashion. Everyone seems to know this fact that chain links resolve backwards and all that sort of stuff. But a chain has to start first, and people need to know what starts a chain. The summoning of a monster doesn't start a chain. The setting of a spell or trap doesn't start a chain. As I said in my previous section, it's activations that start chains. But what does happen is that when a monster is summoned, the game state becomes closed. Um, it doesn't leave any options open for your opponent to respond. But what people mix up is that when someone drops a Vader on a rescue rabbit, they think that the Vader is directly responding to the rabbit's summon. Um, it's not. It's responding because quick effects can be activated at any time during that main phase. So perhaps to a lot of people this didn't make a whole lot of sense, but I was merely trying to put across the point that there is a certain state in the game known as the open game state that a lot of people don't seem to know about. And they seem to think that they can activate any card at any time in response to anything. And that is just simply not the case. If an opponent chooses to avoid chainable events, then they can technically avoid you responding with anything other than quick effects. If they never summon a monster, you can never respond with anything. If they just um, passively tribute something as a cost, again, a, a paying of a cost does not start a chain, and to summon a Jinzo or something, then you can't respond until that Jinzo is summoned. So anyway, just keep an eye out for stuff like that. Check the graph on yugiocard.com um, and, and check it out for yourself. But basically, a lot of people aren't aware of these things. They'll learn a basic uh, representation of the rules, which does not include uh, terms such as ignition, trigger, continuous types of effects, and also things like chain ability, open game states, and so forth. They will learn a rudimentary and basic form of those things, and they will basically miss out on things which could potentially gain them some advantage in a game. Anyway guys, that is it for the video today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. Um, I am Weevil, YugiTuber, and um, I'll be uploading more videos soon, including a lot of dual videos. Um, as regards the next rules of the game series, I want you guys to tell me what you want to see. Is there anything, any card ruling that you want me to talk about that's particularly controversial, or that you've got some issues with at your locals or at other big events, um, anything like that? I will come up with more ideas myself and will upload videos either way. But the more feedback I can get from you guys, the better. I can help make my channel a much better one. So I want to thank you guys for all your support so far. I am Weeble YouTuber. I am signing out. Peace, guys.